Welcome back to the Sandy Trail. We are in the third and final part of episode 7 of season 1 review of the show called Sanderton, if you don't know. Um, I uploaded the first two parts for episode 7 and unfortunately YouTube gave me a hard time so I took them down, edited them again, minor editing, like not too bad, and I we uploaded them and hopefully there are no more issues with those two. This one I would be extra careful because after this video there's only one episode left to go in season one which is episode eight, the season finale episode. There will be a lot of emotion in episode eight, uh, especially when we navigate through this episode together. If you know what happened, you know. But I look forward to it, and I'm so excited for season two. And I know some of you might not be interested, but I'm going to continue, and I hope you respect that. So here we go for the last 10, 15, 20 minutes of episode Seven. You sure hardly wish to see me flung out without a penny? Even now, that's all you care about. No. No, this is about us. This is about our future. There is no us. There is no future. You saw to that when you schemed with Clara. I did what I had to. If you remember from episode one, when Charlotte met Edward for the first time, all the way up to this point in this scene, you can tell, you can pick up. I think it was so obvious that Edward was the type of guy that can be flirty, persuasive, attractive, if he was your type. He was really not a gentleman at all, and his true colors showed, uh, especially within the last two episodes, episode six and seven. He cared more about money than love. He cared more about money than his sister, his family, his uh, aunt. He actually wanted his aunt, Lady Denham, to actually die because he had that plan with Clara um, in burning the will and um, making that evil plan to take control over Lady Denham assets and money. Uh, he didn't hear about Esther Hart, and it shows so much more in this conversation. And he trying to persuade Esther, like, you're so wrong. Like, I hear about you. He trying to cover up the guilt that is on him. He tried to cover up his true intention and cover up who he really is and the type of man and person that he is. We would have been left with nothing. I loved you. I think it was like the most honest conversation that Esther ever had with Edward, especially when it comes to her feelings for him. And the good she said it out loud uh, to him what he did with Clara, not only burning up the will, but also Edward making out with Clara on the floor <laughs> of the drawing room. Edward was surprised though. He was he was surprised, I would say, to hear Esther said that about um Clara and what Clara did with Edward and of course he tried to deny it, he tried to cover up the truth and tried to make himself look presentable like he's an innocent man. We all know he is not innocent and he broke Esther's heart too many times by now and I think this is the final blow, this is like the finale <laughs> for the Esther and Edward affair, love affair, and I hope that by the end of this scene, by the end of this conversation, this is done for Esther, and she deserves to 
be happy and to be truly loved by a man that is not her brother, number one, and two, a man that will honestly and truthfully and openly uh, love her with no shame at all. May we join you? Mm. What is the topic of discussion? Miss Hayward and I were just discussing marriage. What is your opinion of marriage, Mr. Parker? I cannot speak of it with any authority, I'm afraid. Huh. Number one, Charlotte didn't want to talk to Eliza, and she doesn't even want to talk to Sydney, especially when he is with Eliza. The awkwardness, the tension are building up in this scene. And I actually like this scene, and I will tell you why later on, but uh, this is just like building up the momentum. Lady Susan, she asked Sydney with so much confidence um, about his opinion on um, looking for a soulmate, uh, what he thinks of on marriage. And Eliza just thinking like, oh, I know the answer, like me and Sydney has history together and, you know, Eliza know what Sydney want, like, and a marriage and she thinks that she still has a chance to be with him. Uh, Sydney, he glanced to Liza and then glanced back to Lady Susan and uh, he just like trying not to get into the drama with three ladies. I mean there was no other guy in the conversation, right? One guy, three ladies and it just like, um, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you ladies what I think or how I feel about a certain someone uh, who is standing right in front of me. So he just cut it to the chase. And part of me, I wish he answered uh, Lady Susan's question, uh, something like simple. He actually wanted to avoid that question and to avoid any drama and speculation. And he doesn't want anyone outside of that group conversation to overhear, right, um, this conversation. So, um, I guess it's just a, a safety, a safe answer for Sydney. What about you, Miss Hayward? You're of marrying age, it must be much on your mind. There seems little point considering marriage until you've found someone you'd wish to marry. Hmm. There must be a boy in your village that's caught your eye. Why should Charlotte be limited to her village? I always think it helps to share a common background, that's all. Lady Susan asked a question to Sydney and Charlotte looked at Sydney while he trying to find an answer to say and when Eliza asked a question to Charlotte now, Sydney looked at Charlotte as she is answering the question. Of course, Sydney wants to know, uh, Charlotte wants to know, but Sydney not saying anything, which is kind of like suckish in a little bit, um, but Charlotte said it um, in general, straightforward, uh, no long story, you know, just cut to the chase as well. Eliza pushed the button um, in this conversation. Lady Susan, at first I was like, why do you have to say that? But Lady Susan said that in support of Charlotte. Uh, she supports her as a friend and she wants the best for Charlotte and she wants Charlotte to find love and uh, to have it with Sydney. Uh, she is definitely team did lot <laughs> in season one. Um, but Eliza, she started to tease Charlotte and she tried to say it like in a polite way but you can see that she was kind of like bullying uh, Charlotte in the scene and making fun of her and uh, making fun of Charlotte's uh, family background and where she came from and just trying to make her look like she have nothing. Uh, she's poor compared to Eliza. Miss Hayward is hardly likely to find a kindred spirit in this company. And why not? I just imagine she must find all our London talk unspeakably tedious. Wouldn't you agree, Sydney? I have no doubt that Charlotte would rather be sat somewhere quietly reading Heraclitus. <laughs> <laughs> she actually tried to get the energy, the attention from the other people at that event. And Charlotte didn't need that. She didn't need everyone to start looking at her um, in a um, 
negative light, you know. She doesn't want the negative attention from other people, especially Eliza, uh, making fun of her in this moment. Uh, Eliza really don't care about Charlotte. All she wants is Sydney. And you have to think, though, like, what is Eliza's intention in getting Sydney? Does she really love him? Like Charlotte loves Sydney, or she just wants to marry a man that is good looking, has decent money, and have a great family, a great reputation. Eliza asked that question to Sydney, and it was one of those like hot seat questions. Is he gonna support Charlotte, be on Charlotte's side, or is he gonna be on Eliza's side? And when he answered the question, a lot of people laughed, and uh, he realized what he did wrong and he felt bad for Charlotte uh, but it showed that he was embarrassed to show support to Charlotte in front of people and remember again Eliza and Charlotte are completely two different women Eliza is much more richer than Charlotte right <laughs> Cindy you are wicked that will certainly not help her find a husband you're quite right Mrs Campion I'm a farmer's daughter who reads books what could I possibly have in common with anyone here Excuse me. The way that Sydney answered that question, it broke Charlotte's heart. I mean, it lowered her confidence and it made her feel embarrassed. And she's just like, I don't need this unnecessary attention on me, uh, especially this kind of people that are richer than me and are from London and they don't know me and now I'm getting all these negative lights up upon me that I don't need the attention from them and I feel really bad for Charlotte in this scene but sometimes when something like this happens right I mean it has to happen to climb over the mountain please Sydney said Charlotte, right, for the first time. Is this true? And correct me if I'm wrong if she said it before this scene, but I thought the first time he said Charlotte, like her name, her actual name was in episode 8, but he said it in this scene. That's a new thing that I learned. <laughs> Good for Charlotte for leaving the conversation. I would have done the same thing. I love Lady Susan giving that disgusted look back to Eliza. Shame on Eliza. Um, she's just a, a fake woman. <laughs> and she doesn't deserve Sydney. Charlotte does. Miss Haywood. Excuse me, the race is about to start. Wait, 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 wait. I only ask for a moment. Well, James Stringer, he had Charlotte running away out of the tent um, with just this um, really sad look on her. And he's like, okay, what's going on? And I thought when I first watched this episode for the first time, I thought he was going to walk over to her and maybe, you know, there's another opportunity for him to comfort her and... Uh, to show her that, you know, he's a good guy and maybe that he will tell her that he likes her. But James, like, stood at a distance and Sydney came over. And I'm so glad Sydney walked over to Charlotte because I think in general, if he didn't, it would have made the situation worse and it showed that he's the type of guy that uh, really didn't want to be on the bad page uh, with Charlotte. He wanted to correct uh, his mistake and to make it right with her and to make sure that she's okay. I hope you weren't too offended by Mrs. Campion. It was only meant in jest. That's all I am to you. A source of amusement. No, of course not, you. Forgive me. Sydney had a moment uh, of just like trying to rationalize the words that he wanted to say to her. Uh, Charlotte, like, you know, what do you want? <laughs> like, what happened, happened. Like, you can't take it back. And Sydney, um, hoping that Charlotte didn't get hurt um, by what Eliza said and 
Um, but much more than that, I think what hurts her more is that what Sydney said to Eliza question and how he tag along with Eliza and just um be on Eliza's side and not show support to Charlotte. Um, if they were friends, you know, if Sydney and Charlotte were friends, he would have supported Charlotte in that group conversation. But no, he did not. And it just broke Charlotte high because she's like, okay, so you with Eliza, you don't see a chance to be with me. So, you know, Charlotte already assumed like it never gonna happen. It's obvious, not only Eliza made a mistake or did something stupid, Sydney too. And I'm glad that he recognized that, that he made a fault in the group conversation. Uh, but this is like the first part uh, of that moment where he's like, of course not, you're not a, a fun amusement, like you're not a person to make fun of. And he was about to say something else, you know, like he really wanted to tell Charlotte of how he thinks of her, his feeling for her. But I think it was in the right moment and they are in a public area and I don't think he wanted to say it and, um, you know, he doesn't want to draw any more attention from other people walking by. On the contrary, you've done me a great service. I'm no longer in any doubt as to how you regard me. Say what? What? What is it you want from me? When he tried to grab her arm the second time, you can tell that it's a little bit more aggressive and his tone is a little bit more aggressive too. Like, let me tell you what, like, he didn't want to let her go. Um, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing the way he said it and tried to, like, um, grab her arm again, it just showed that he still in the middle of making it right with Charlotte. But Charlotte had enough, she didn't want to talk to him any further, and she was like, what do you want? And that's like the second time that he tried to say it, but he just like so overwhelmed <laughs> by her tone and uh, her angry face, and he just like, oh, like, he didn't say it. And, but again, I think he didn't want to say it because, again, they are in the public area and I think he'd rather say it in private. Please, be kind enough to leave me alone. Charlotte walked away, finally, and um, after she walked away, the camera panned over to Sydney's face, and it was that same face that he'd been doing all along in this conversation, that look of, like, I know what I want to say to her, but it's just not the right moment, and um, he just couldn't get it out. But again, like, I think he'd rather say what he feels about her um, in private with her, uh, with no one around, and... Um, We'll see if that happened, but it's just those three instances in this entire conversation with um Charlotte. He just had that look of like, oh, uh, like it's just like he was mesmerized by Charlotte and like her her strong presence and her strong tone and just showing how angry she is, and he just like felt like a little belittle a bit, like, oh my god, like, how am I gonna <laughs> say what I feel about her, how I feel about her when she, you know, angry at me, like, is she gonna accept my feeling for her, does she feel the same way that I do, uh, because Charlotte, she feel like Sydney doesn't like her like that, you know, in a romantic way, and James, he watched the whole thing, <laughs> unfold right in front of his eyes and I'm glad he did because that's an answer to him like James Charlotte is not the right one for you like not meant to be you should just let her go <laughs> and let her be with Sydney and uh, like I said earlier when um in the first part of episode 7 review I think, no, second, sorry, I think the last video, James had a conversation with Charlie and, uh, at the Vegeta, and they were talking about um, Charlie's thoughts and, like, you know, her distraction, like, what she thinking, what she feeling, and that's when James realized that 
Charlotte might not be into him and that she might be into someone else. And that's why I said um, when Jane watched Charlotte um, having a conversation with Sydney in front of Jane, Jane was like, oh, so Charlotte likes Sydney? <laughs>